What's up guys, Tech James here. In this video, I will be installing the MuPen64 Nintendo 64 emulator onto the new Pocket Go, also known as the Pocket Go 2. For this video, I will be installing it on my secondary SD card, so I guess you guys can see how you would set up a secondary SD card, and it is very easy. Keep in mind this emulator is kind of similar to the Nintendo 64 emulator on the PSP. Basically, it's a bit laggy, there might be sound issues. To be honest, I haven't really looked into it that much but what I've heard so far is that it isn't really that good which is probably why it isn't installed by default but if you guys want to get it and test it out like me you can follow along with this video so what I'm gonna do is get my SD card we're gonna go and connect this to my computer um, you might want to power off your pocket go first so if you just go into applications actually if you just go into settings and just scroll down go to power off let's just power it off then we can go and connect our SD card and then we can copy across the emulator and the ROMs that we need Alright guys, so over on my PC, and I've got my secondary SD card connected. This is formatted to FAT32, and it also has an apps folder on it. Now, if you guys don't have an apps folder, all you want to do is right-click, new folder, and call it apps. And once you've made this folder, any OPK emulator file that you put in here will actually appear on your Pocket Go. So it's pretty cool. It's maybe an easier way of using secondary storage, and um, that's pretty much just how you set it up. In my last video, I think a few of you guys didn't realize it was literally that easy to use use a secondary SD card. But now what we're going to do is we're going to go onto the website and we're going to find the Nintendo 64 emulator. Okay, so here over on this website, it has a massive index of different emulators, apps, and games, all for the Pocket Go, and a few other devices as well, like the RG350. But what we're going to click on is the extra emulators, because from here, we can find a Nintendo 64 emulator. So what we're going to do, we're going to scroll down, and we're going to find it. Now, don't click on it. What you actually want to do is right-click on it, and you want to click Save Link As. And then it gives you the option to save it somewhere in your downloads folder. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to save it i've already got one but i might as well just save it again for this video and then we're going to go to our downloads folder and we can actually find this file now of course you can get as many emulators as you want there's Game Boy advance ones there's different ones just keep in mind most of these emulators aren't exactly best performing on the pocket go or the rg350 um, just like this nintendo 64 one it can be a bit laggy Okay, so I've just copied across my Nintendo 64 ROMs folder. It's entirely up to you where you decide to get your ROMs from, and both ROM types work. So N64 and Z64 will both work with this emulator. As you can see, I've got um, Super Smash Bros, Pokemon Stadium, and Banjo-Kazooie. I might also get a copy of Mario 64. Mario 64 is probably one of the best performing ones, but just like the PSP, uh, they're not exactly that playable. This video is pretty much just a test video, but all you want to do is go back to your downloads we're going to put the ROMs onto my SD card we're also going to get the emulator and this is just going to go inside of the apps folder so once these two files are copied across so the ROMs folder and of course the um, OPK app itself that is literally it so what we can do now is we can disconnect this SD card we can put it back into our pocket go and we can play some Nintendo 64 games Alright guys, so once we're back, the first thing you want to do is of course plug in your SD card. So let's just go and plug that in right now. Okay, now once your SD card is plugged in, you just want to go ahead and power on your Pocket Go 2. Just wait for it to load up, and hopefully the emulator should actually be on the home screen. If you guys put the OPK file inside of the apps folder, just like me, um, you should be able to scroll over to emulators, and you will be able to find it on here. So here it is, guys, um, M64 plus Alpha. Um, this is an Alpha build, so again, might be a bit glitchy. Let's press A to go and start it. Now let's go onto our SD card, Let's go into our Nintendo 64 folder and let's try ROM. I think we can try Mario 64 first. Um, I guess we can try this one. Let's start it up. As I said, it could be very glitchy, so just keep that in mind. Okay, so on the loading screen right here, if you guys take note of Mario's face, it's not exactly the smoothest thing in the world, but it is better than previous Nintendo 64 emulators I've seen. Let's just press on start and then we can just start up a new game. Um, and then I guess we can try a bit of gameplay. So the cutscene, it actually looks pretty good. Very similar to the PSP, I guess. But let's just start it, and then I guess we can try out some quick gameplay. 
So this is exactly what I mean by it's similar to the PSP. If you guys just listen to the audio here, it is very stuttery. You are not going to want to play this with the audio turned on. It's just going to drive you crazy because of how annoying it is. Um, to be honest, I think the PSP one is actually better. Um, the PSP one did have quite a few updates and it didn't quite sound as stuttery as this. I will turn it back on in a minute. I'm just trying to avoid copyright from Nintendo because as you all know, they absolutely hate me. But let's just try some quick Nintendo 64 gameplay um, and basically see what it's like. And can I use the analog stick? No, I can't. Okay, so I can only use the D-pad. Um, I don't know. I don't know if it's worse than the PSP or not. It's definitely... I mean, it's kind of playable, to be fair. The audio is bad. I have, I admit the audio is very bad. Um, as you guys might know of the Pocket Go 2, the up and down buttons on the D-pad aren't really that amazing. So this could cause um, a bit of errors, seeing as we don't have the analog stick. So on the PSP, um, kind of, you know, the Daedalus emulator, as soon as you enter in the castle, the audio um, really goes quite horrible. So let's take a look at this one. And yeah, it's very, very similar to the PlayStation Portable. It is a bit glitchy. I guess what we can do is we'll try and play World 1, even though the D-pad is pretty hard to use. Let's try and play it, and let's just see what happens. So here you go, World 1. What is it like? It's very slow. The frame rate has massive kind of like lag spikes. Sometimes it's okay, and then it has suddenly dropped quite a bit. And that can be quite annoying when playing a game. As you can see, the speed of how it's running right now is very slow. I don't have an FPS counter turned on, but I'd say it's probably about 10 FPS right now. Maybe slightly more than 10 FPS, I'm not 100% sure, um, but I'm just going to say it's not that easy to play. I've played this level many times, and as you can see, I literally just fell off the bridge. Um, but yeah, it's not, it's not like horrible, it's just not really that good. Now there is quite a cool feature on this um, kind of emulator, if you just want to back out of the game very quickly, all you do is press the select select button and it will just literally back you out. So let's play Pokemon Stadium, I have a feeling this is going to go horrible, <laughs> but let's just take a look at it. I guess the good thing is I can compare this to the PSP and when I launch up Pokemon Stadium on the PSP the character sprites of these Pokemon will not even load in properly. So the Pocket Go is kind of doing it a bit better. Oh, that one wasn't loaded in properly. So you just got to kind of look for a mesh um, on the character and you can kind of see like how it loads in. So yeah, these Pokemon here appear to be okay. When I loaded this up on the PSP, all of the meshes were completely broken and it looked really bad and this game was completely unplayable. But there you go guys, there is the new Pen 64, um, Nintendo 64 emulator for the Pocket Go which is currently in alpha. This should work on the original Pocket Go and on the RG350 as well. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, leave a subscribe. Um, I wouldn't really recommend playing this, but if you want to test some games, you might as well go ahead and try. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.